groups, if you could just uh, talk a little bit about what you were discussing just earlier in the panel session. Well, I thought what was really interesting today was um, the fact that um, we'd all separately identified some very similar issues. Um, and I think one of the biggest challenges for the community is to try and get the best practice from operational theatres such as Afghanistan and previously in Iraq um, with regard to intelligence sharing and interagency working and make sure that we translate those lessons towards the future. Um, and after those particular campaigns are finished to make sure that um, we institutionalise the best practice um, that we've learned and make sure we take that forward for the future. Now one of those things that, that, that kept coming up was of course collaboration and uh, how we actually are sharing our data. You were talking about the, the, the degrees of collaboration earlier. Perhaps if you could just explain what that was all about and what the difference is between a sort of a, a base level collaboration and a, and a top end. Mm. Yes, I think that uh, I think we would all recognise that historically, um, probably the the lowest level of um, working between organisations and, and agencies has been about deconfliction and just making sure that um, in effect we're not trespassing in on, on each other's territory. Um, I think what we have found um, in operational theatres um, and in the wider sort of national collaborative um, environment that actually you need a much closer um, relationship and a, a, much, um, a much better um, sharing relationship to try and take um, th this sort of business forward. Um, how far along that, that sort of spectrum of um, collaborative working you take it um, is you know, clearly a matter of sort of um, policy and sharing between intelligence organisations. Um, whether you move to one sort of central integrated intelligence organisation is whether that's desirable or not is um, I think a matter for debate but what is certainly clear is that for the future we need to make sure all our agencies are sharing data better um, and collaborating more closely. Now in terms of uh, the, the changing nature of the, the way we handle data one of those uh, examples that kept coming up all the way through was uh, well, I suppose your 17-year-old son and everyone's 17-year-old son. How is the way that we handle data going to have to change mm. to accommodate the, the new blood coming through? Well, I think that we have to recognise that we live in an information age um, and that the, the, the military and the agencies are, you know, are not exempt from that and the, the people we are now recruiting um, are used to dealing with information um, in a much more dynamic way um, with access to much wider sources of information uh, than we previously would have ourselves. So I think the challenge for us is harnessing all that available information, making sure that it's within a structured, disciplined um, system and process to make sure that we're focusing on key, key requirements, um, but at the same time allowing um, people to operate within that environment and allowing them to be dynamic and allowing them to be um, ultimately much more productive. Well, thank you very much for taking time to speak with us. I uh, look forward to speaking with you again later in the conference. Okay, thank you very much.